Along with the Army Corps of Engineers, the members of One Skilled Trade are working tirelessly to protect a great natural resource from an invasive species that, if gone unchecked, could bring about devastating environmental effects. Asian carp, they like to jump, especially in Star Brack Pool and further south on the Illinois River. There's places that you can go and they're just jumping out of the water like fireworks. They can cause a lot of damage. They can break bones, cause concussions, damage boat motors. They're definitely a hazard. The Asian carps are brought into the southern U.S. as part of the aquaculture industry. Rachel Carlson wrote this book back in the 50s talking about the fact that we use so many chemicals in our environment that uh, we're killing off our frogs and our insects. So in the 60s and 70s, agencies brought in these fish to help clean the ponds, uh, make a healthier fish. And instead of putting chemical on the fish, we have one that's just raised with other fish. Unfortunately, big head carp, silver carp, those Asian carp species, the ones we see jumping out of the water, quickly get escaped into the environment. So Asian carp are highly voracious planktivores that outcompete our native species for food and space. We found our first ones in Illinois in 1986 on the Ohio River, on the Illinois River, and in 1990 we saw them up really in the upper Illinois River already. In the Mississippi River Basin broadly, we may have 160 or 180 invasive fish. Some of the biggest ones you may have heard of are things like uh, sea lamprey, the decimated lake trout populations, or zebra mussels really change the food web. So having another invader is not something we want to do. So the Illinois Department of Natural Resources introduced a new top predator. We are in the Hanson Material Services West Pit. It's a backwater lake, 500 acre backwater lake um, that's indirectly connected to the Illinois River. And we have three commercial fishermen out here that are contracted through the state that are removing Asian carp from these waters. They have gill and trammel nets and they lay the nets out in the water. Once the nets are laid out, the commercial fishermen will drive. So they'll rub their motors, beat on the side of the boats with baseball bats or pipes and scare the Asian carp from where they were into the nets. The commercial fishermen have grown up in Illinois fishing for things like catfish and buffalo. We have to kind of encourage them. The markets, the demand for these fish has been fairly low. None of the fish that we uh, catch are used for human consumption. They're used for fertilizer, lobster bait out in Maine, crayfish bait in Louisiana, uh, pet treats. Farther downstream, there is a commercial market, and it is for human food. They taste very good, like a cod, very light. It's not very fishy at all. So when we started this program in 2010, we were catching very large Asian carp, very large big head carp and silver carp. And as the program has progressed, we're actually seeing that the Asian carp have gotten smaller in size. In the last seven years, we've seen a 96% decrease in the relative abundance of those fish at the farthest uh, north populations. But the Illinois River is the gateway to the entire Great Lakes, and while human predation has cut the numbers dramatically, that's not enough for the Army Corps of Engineers. There are still a few survivors and over 150 other invasive species to contend with. You're always taught electricity and water don't mix, and you know this is like it, this is not your typical job site. We are at the Chicago Sanitary and Ship Canal Aquatic Nuisance Species Dispersal Barriers. Construction of the barriers was to install a steel billet electrodes 160 feet long at the bottom of the canal with cables coming up into the buildings connected to the pulse generating systems which basically pulses DC power into the water. The way it works is we do get our electricity from the local electrical utility. We then take that electricity and convert it from alternating current to direct current. Charges capacitor banks that are inside and then it sends that through the IGBT switches that basically allow, to basically sends however much power they need into the water at any given time. The electrical field in the water is actually constant from wall to wall, but it's, it varies from upstream to downstream and it's set up to peak in the middle. So as a fish is swimming into the electrical field, the farther it goes into the electrical field, the greater the shock it gets. Oh, well, it's just kind of like a, a cattle fence. As the fish gets closer, um, they'll turn around. Every once in a while, you'll get a fish that tries to make a run for it, and you see them basically fold up and float back south. It doesn't kill the fish because field strength 
in the barrier at, where at its peak is about 2.3 volts per inch. By that we mean if we put in a voltmeter at that point with the leads about an inch apart, you'd read 2.3 volts. So the effective zappage is proportional to the surface area of the zappy. As long as you don't go in the water, you're fine, basically. If you and I were to uh, fall into the canal, these things can be deadly. We're much bigger than most of these fish. But uh, the fish, it's not a lethal barrier at all. As far as we can tell, it works. All of our monitoring has never detected any Asian carp right here immediately at the barriers. Native uh, species that we see challenging the barrier, we're watching them too to know how, if carp got here, how they would respond. You can sit at the end at, right over by the bridge and you can actually watch the fish stop.